If you're curious about Sea of Stars, its gameplay, story, or characters, then you've come to the right place. I'm Steel Knight Plays, and this is everything you need to know about Sea of Stars and what happens in the demo before the game comes out August 29th. Sea of Stars is a charming turn-based RPG, and the premise is that we follow the story of the two children of Solstice, Zael, the bold optimist, born on the summer solstice with the power of the sun, and Valir, the calm and curious, born in the winter solstice that has the power of the moon. Of the two, the game lets you choose which one you'd like to control and lead the party as a protagonist. With the powers of sun and moon, Zael and Valir are able to perform spectacular eclipse magic, which is the only force capable of fending off the monsters created by the evil alchemist known as the Fleshmancer. Through your adventures, there are six playable characters to accompany you and help you along your journey. However, only a party of three can be used when in combat. As of recording, we know of three so far based on the demo. First, we have the previously mentioned Zael, known as the Sun Boy or the Solar Blade Dancer in the compendium. Zael, with the power of the sun, can use solar-based abilities in his weapon, the Sun Blade, which deals slashing damage. Other than his slightly lacking defense and poor magic defense, offensively his attack and magic attack are great and equally on par, making him very versatile. In the demo at level 3, he has access to the skill's Healing Light, which allows him to heal HP to either himself or a single ally, and his signature move Sunball, which he charges up a ball of fire to deal massive solar damage. Next up, and as mentioned before, we have Valir, known as the Moon Girl or Lunar Monk in the compendium. With her power over the moon, she's able to deal devastating lunar magic, and her weapon is the Moon Staff, which deals blunt damage. Similar to Zael, Valir has pretty subpar defense and magic defense, whereas offensively, she has pretty respectable magic attack and fantastic physical attack. Based on her level 3 in the demo, we know her skill abilities are Moonering, which is a lunar attack that bounces between enemies as you repel an arc every time it comes back to you, similar to like tennis, to deal more damage. And she also has the skill Crescent Arc that hits enemies in front of her in a cone shape. Third up is their best friend Garl, otherwise known as the warrior cook in the compendium. Garl is said to be born a regular kid devoid of any special powers, but due to his kindness and warm heart, he makes for a fantastic tank and support. Garl has amazing HP and attack, and his weapon is actually a shield that does blunt damage. Also, he wears heavier gear or armor compared to the Solstice duo. Garl's skills are Hurl, which he throws an enemy into a a group of enemies to assist with crowd control and the ability Nourish, which he digs into his pack and throws a snack to his friend for a heal. When you and your party are traversing the world of Sea of Stars, enemies can be seen in the overworld and can be engaged or avoided. When you choose to get in combat, there's no transition to a separate battleground to fight, it just happens right then and there. This gives players the freedom to avoid enemies if they feel like it, since there's no random encounters or need for grinding. The overworld can also be explored for loot and chests, and even food ingredients spread throughout, as food and cooking plays a large role in this game. Similar to the the random ingredients dotted around, you can also fish to collect for cooking as well. And also avoiding spoilers, the demo lets you play through a small mission and dungeon with Zael, Valir, and Garl in the party after landing on top of a mountain just after being thrown by a massive entity in what seems to be the game's fast travel or shuttle into a new area system. This small tutorial quickly leads you to the port town of Brisk where you meet up and ask for some assistance from a group of pirates. This eventually leads you to the abandoned wizard's lab which is a dungeon and is full of interesting puzzles as well as collecting different colored crystals to open like a massive door to an awesome encounter and surprisingly challenging boss just before the demo ends. Also, if you're interested in me covering this full dungeon as well as all the loot that you can find in it, let me know down in the comments and I'll get right on it. The combat in Sea of Stars is inspired by the other great classic JRPGs where tactics and resource management is critical. And similar to other turn-based games, when jumping into battle, you're presented with four options during your turn, which are attack for basic single target damage, skills, which cost MP for either healing or specific special attacks, items, which is self-explanatory, and lastly, combat combos between allies, which are abilities or attacks and are unique to each party member and their relationship with other party members. However, these combos require your combo meter on the bottom left to be filled throughout the battle, which occurs every time you perform an action. Alongside that, it's always best to be topped off with food you've either bought or cooked during your journey, which can also be done by setting up camp, going to the fire, and choosing the right recipe based on the ingredients you've collected along the way. The demo showed that Garl could make herbed fillets with grains and fish to restore HP, berry jam from red berries to restore MP or the mana in this game, or Mushroom Soup, which can heal the whole party. Hopefully this quick overview of Sea of Stars was helpful or informative, but if you'd like me to go more in depth on any of the systems like fishing or the dungeon in the demo, let me know in the comments, because when it comes to outros and videos, they're a little